Okay, so let's apply what we just learned to a specific example. So let's say that we get a question that asks us to verify a minimum occurs on f of x equals x squared minus 4x minus 12 at an x value of 2. So the first step we have to do, we have to show that the instantaneous rate of change or the slope of the tangent is equal to 0 at that specific x value of 2 on this function f of x. So different ways to find the instantaneous rate of change. The way that I am going to do it is I'm going to use the difference quotient. So I'm going to find f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 all over h. If you haven't gone over the difference quotient videos earlier on in this chapter, I would highly recommend you go over those first so you understand what I am doing at this step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the f of 2 plus h portion of this whole expression and then do it on the side. So since f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 12, then f of 2 plus h, we just have to plug in this 2 plus h for all of the x's in the function, which I did here. So 2 plus h squared minus 4 times 2 plus h minus 12. And when you expand everything, 2 plus h squared, so when you FOIL that L, 2 plus h times 2 plus h, you would end up getting 4 plus 4h plus h squared. And then distributing this negative 4 in the bracket, you would get negative 8 minus 4h. Uh, this would be minus 12. So what would you have here? Notice how the 4h's cancel out, so you're left with h squared, and then 4 minus 8 minus 12 would give you minus um, 16, right? So f of 2 plus h ends up simplifying to h squared minus 16. So that is the f of 2 plus h portion. And then similarly, if we find out what f of 2 is going to be, plugging in 2 for the x values, we would end up with negative 16. So we would be subtracting f of 2, and f of 2 is negative 16. And this is still going to be all over h. So h squared minus 16 minus negative 16, notice how this would turn into positive 16, and then negative 16 plus 16, those would net out to 0. So we would just be left with h squared over h, which would just give us h. So then what we can do is we can plug in very small h values to get the uh, best approximations, and to get the exact instantaneous rate of change at this x value 2, we plug in 0 for all the h's. Well, notice how there's only an h left. So if we plug in 0 for this, we would just end up getting 0. So that there is the instantaneous rate of change at an x value of 2 on this function x squared minus 4x minus 12. So we showed that the instantaneous rate of change is equal to 0 at that x value. So we completed step 1. Now, if you're going to be finding the instantaneous rate of change using the difference quotient, for this step, since the instantaneous rate of change has to be zero at the end, all your expressions at the end should be only in terms of h. So for example, like this expression, we only add an h left. But you can also have maybe something like 4h squared plus 4h. Notice how each expression has an h attached to it. So when you plug in zero for the h's to find that specific instantaneous rate of change, you'll end up with zero all the time. If you get to this point, and you have some kind of constant around. So let's say instead of just having h here, we ended up having like h plus 4. Well, then you know that you did something wrong if you are verifying that a minimum occurs and they give you that specific x value because the instantaneous rate of change has to be 0 at this point. And when we plug in 0 for the h, we would end up getting an instantaneous rate of change of 4 if we ended up with h plus 4. So there can't be any constants around. Everything has to have an h attached to it. And if you end up with something that uh, has h attached to all the expressions, then you know you're on the right track because the instantaneous rate change is going to be 0 when you sub in that 0 for 
H. Okay, so step one, verify instantaneous rate of change is equal to zero. That is complete. So what's step two now? We have to verify that it's a minimum that's occurring because from step one, we verified instantaneous rate of change is zero, but we don't know whether that's a minimum or a maximum. So now for step two, we have to verify that it's an actual minimum. And how do we do that? Well, what we have to do is we have to look at the Y values at the point we are working with and with points that are very close to it. So we have to find f of 2.1, let's say, or even f of 2.01, and f of 1.9, or f of 1.99, right? So I'm just going to use 1.9 and 2.1, but you can use points that are even closer to 2. And f of 2, we already figured out what that was in step 1. That was part of the difference quotient, and we got a value of negative 16. So now what we have to do is we have to find out what the y values are going to be at an x value 2.1 and 1.9. So we just take those x values, plug them into the function we're given. And when we end up plugging those values in, we end up getting that y value of negative 15.99 for both 1.9 and an x value of 2.1. So let's graph these three points out and let's see what's going on visually. So um, you know what, let's, uh, let's put the x axis actually a little higher here. So f of two is equal to negative 16. So that means if let's say the x value is here two and the y value is negative 16 here, so that point will be there. And that's the point we have to verify is a minimum. Well, now what we can do is let's plot these points. So 2.1, let's say is over here. So notice how this is very zoomed in on the x-axis. This is not to scale at all. I'm just kind of trying to zoom in here so you see what is happening. So we got 1.9 and 2.1 x values to the left and to the right of that point that we are working with. And we know that f of 1.9 is negative 15.99. Where, well, where is negative 15.99 in relation to negative 16? Well, it's going to be above it. So it's going to be like up here, let's say. So that's going to be negative 15.99. So at, an, at this x value 1.9, this y value negative 15.99 is occurring. So that's going to be like here. And then same thing, f of 2.1 is negative 15.99. So that's going to be occurring here. So if we draw this portion of the function, it's going to look something like that. So notice how this is obviously a minimum because the y values for points that are very close to that x value of 2, the y values are above that y value of negative 16. So we can be pretty confident that that is a minimum that is occurring. Okay, so we showed that in two steps. First step, we showed that the instantaneous rate of change, the slope of the tangent, is zero because it's a horizontal line. We did that with the difference quotient. And then in step two, we looked at y values for this function that were very close to this x value of two to both the right side and the left side. Those y values were greater than that y value of negative 16 at that x value of two. So we know that a minimum is occurring at this x value of two. And that is the end of the question. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.